So we've just been advising people, take communion first thing in the morning every day. Sanctify your space where you are. You don't have to be in a church building to do that. It's great to be together, but every morning, start your day with the priority of saying, Lord, you come first today. And this has been a very different season for a lot of us. So um, I'm, I'm not in any way minimizing the amount of pain that people are in that have lost loved ones. Even the one I mentioned, my uncle, uh, there, you know, if we would have been able to have a normal memorial service for him, it would have been a celebration of his life. And I can't even imagine how many hours of testimonies would come forth and will come forth someday, but just not right now. And this is when you want to be with the family and to, and to love on them and, and help carry the, the burden of their grief. And you can't be because of COVID. It's keeping us all separated. It's just a demonic plot. But we pray against that, right? So that's part of the grieving is there wasn't as much closure as there might have been for family members. And we don't get to get together and help each other grieve, which the Bible clearly tells us to do, to, to weep with those who are weeping. And it's what Jesus did. He wept with Martha and Mary when he came upon the scene of Lazarus' tomb. And, and he felt what we felt. And he's in all ways touched with our infirmities. And he was a man who was well acquainted with grief. And so many people that we know are dealing with grief right now. But even in the midst of that, we can still say, I will magnify the Lord. I will exalt his name together with my brothers and sisters. And, and I know that's a big part of why our hearts are hurting a little bit too, that we're not together. And the Bible clearly says it. I'll repeat it. Forsake not the assembling together with other believers. There's a reason for that because there's a power in corporate worship. There's a power in the body of Christ. And I'm not saying that Facebook and YouTube aren't great channels. They are for us to be together like we are now. Otherwise, what will we be doing? But there's just a different connection when it's in person. There's an atmosphere that gets created of worship. And what happens is our faith gets built up as we step into a zone where there's a big group of people that have a lot of faith. We encourage one another. And that's what a lot of people have been missing lately, just that human touch and that human contact. So, Lord, I pray for those that are in that, that position right now, even those that have been quarantined and have to be alone by the law because they've been exposed to this, the health care workers, the frontline people. And we just speak life and health to you, and we speak the comfort of the Lord, that the Word of God talks about the comfort that he gives. It's, I believe, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. He uses that word about 10 different times. Study that comfort. And on Isaiah 26, verse 3, I believe it is, it says, God will give you perfect peace. I will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on me. And, and we also just try to give you other resources to point you to. Our channel on YouTube has over 400 videos that you can watch. And it's all people from our stream, my wife and I, but also others like Chuck Pearson, Dutch Sheets, and Jane Hammond, and so many other anointed people that we know. And that could be like a, a booster shot in the middle of your day when you're feeling down. Just click on one of those videos and just get into the presence of God. That's why we do it. We want to be a resource center for you. It's a, an equipping center as well as a local church. King of Kings, that's been our mandate right from the very beginning. And we're going to keep on doing that as long as, as, as we're here and we're uh, the ones that are making the decisions. So um, my verse is from 34, Psalm 34, verse 3. Uh, that's, that was the title. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let's say it together. Let us exalt his name together. That's my emphasis, is that we're doing it together, right? So we have the advantage of having 10 people here. Praise God. Despise not small beginnings. We'll take it. We'll take whatever the, the law says. We want to be obedient to what the laws are, but sometimes the laws are ridiculous. So we don't know how long this thing is supposed to go, but it doesn't hurt for them to hear that we're not happy in the government and sign petitions and say, look, we get it. We're adults. We know how to handle our lives. We don't want to die. We're not afraid of it like some other people might be, but we don't want to die. But we'll, we'll behave. You know, we'll do what you ask us to do, but let us be back together again. And, and this verse 4 just comes alongside what he said. Three words, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. And then David just gives us this awesome testimony. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and he delivered me from all my fears. It doesn't say some of my fears. But are you seeking the Lord? That's called prayer. 
I sought the Lord, he heard me, and he delivered me from all my fears. You can picture the Jews when they were escaping Egypt and, and come up against that Red Sea and the army is behind them. There's a lot of fears, right? They're seeking the Lord. They're calling out, Lord, what are we going to do? Maybe it was better if we had just stayed back there. And the Lord's saying, no, your leader knows how to hear my voice. And he spoke to Moses and he said, speak to that sea, lift up that staff. And that sea parted. And God will do that for you. He'll part the Red Sea in front of you, but you need to seek him. Don't get shut down by the enemy. I sought the Lord. He heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Not some of my fears, all my fears. They get through on dry ground, and then they watch the Egyptians get swallowed up by that sea when it closed in upon them. They never would have been able to predict that, could they? And that happens with us as well. We don't know how he's going to do it, and one of the messages we put up there is get the how out of here, <laughs> right? So... That's, that's Bishop Joseph Garlington that I heard say that. It's like, stop trying to analyze everything. You're standing up against the Red Sea. I sought the Lord. He heard me, and he'll deliver you from those fears. Then David goes on to say in 34.5, they looked to him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out. The Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. Do you guys believe it? Talk back to me a little. Are you happy about that? The angels of the Lord are encamped around about you because you fear him and you know God will deliver you. And it reminded me in uh, our, our first church that I got saved into and I was part of the music ministry there. We, uh, we were in relationship with Bishop Jerry Kaufman in the Bronx. And they used to send some of the people that were in, on their leadership team to help teach schools in our church. And it was awesome because a lot of them were ex-drug addicts that had gotten saved their lives, just like Jerry Kaufman. Their lives have been just totally turned around. And um, the, the one guy that I'm remembering now came out of a Hispanic background where there was a lot of witchcraft involved before he got saved. But he was a great musician. And he would come and he would teach us songs. And, and, and they just had so much emotion and so much feeling behind it because he was so grateful for having been saved out of heroin addiction. And, and only God can do that, right? Yeah. It's not our willpower. He knew how he was delivered. And the song was called um, Take Down Your Harps from the Willow Tree. Right. <laughs> and I didn't even know what it meant because I was a new Christian. I didn't know he was quoting something from the Bible. But it's right here in Psalm 137. It says in verse 1, By the rivers of Babylon we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. Because they had been taken captive. Okay, they were in exile and they have been taken captive. And that's why it says 137 at the top there. It says exiles in captivity. And, and it can be like that when you're addicted, right? When, when you're bound by a drug addiction, you can feel like that's what's in control of your life. But no, we're saying God is in control of your life if you'll yield yourself to him. So when they said take down your harps from the willow tree, that's where, this is where it came from. Verse 2 and 3 says, there on the poplars or the willow, we hung our harps. For there our captors asked us for songs. And our tormentors demanded songs of joy. And they said, sing us one of the songs of Zion. In verse 4, you could hear the cry of their heart. How can we sing the songs of the Lord while we're captives in exile in a foreign land? But you can. And that was the point of the song. Take down your harps from the willow tree. Because God has given us a new song. <laughs> and that's what you have to do. You might feel like you're in exile and you're in captivity because of the physical constraints, but your heart is never physically constrained away from God. Wherever you are, he is. And especially when you can gather together with others, then that power even multiplies. But uh, Adriel said it during communion. Just remember, he said he would never leave you or forsake you. So I'm just encouraging you. If you put the harp up on the willow tree, grab it and let God speak a new song and sing a new song into your heart. And then Psalm 126 is the counter of... After they get out of captivity, this is a description, another song that came from a different church, but uh, uh, some of you that have been with us for a while, you'll know it when I, when I say the verse. And, and then on the title I put, Freed by Sacrificial Love, right? That's what we've been. That's what we just celebrated with communion, that we've been freed from the captivity and bondage of sin by the sacrificial love of Jesus. Look what happens when, when they get out, when they, when they get delivered from that captivity in Babylon. It says, when the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. That's not a nightmare. That's a dream. That's the times when things are going so well for you that you're like pinching yourself and saying, is this real? Is this really happening or am I in a dream? 
The opposite is the nightmare that you're saying, man, I wish I would just wake up and this thing would be a dream. I wish it wasn't the reality I was living in. But they're saying, no, when we came out of that captivity, we were like people who dream. Our mouths were filled with laughter and our tongue was filled with singing. And they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. Amen. And then they say it in the first person, the Lord has done great things for us. Amen. Us. And we are glad. Amen. And then he says, bring back that captivity, O Lord, as the streams of the south meeting, restore what we lost while we were in captivity. And more than that, restore my hope and my joy in my heart. And I speak that over you as well, that it might be, it might be lingering in the background somewhere, but God's going to bring it up to the front. Let your heart beat again. Tell your heart, I'm going to get engaged and I'm going to live my life and I'm not letting the enemy keep me shut down like this. We break off depression. We break off that that spirit of wanting to bail out and just give up and quit. No. God loves you. There's a purpose for your life, a plan and a good purpose. Because then in 5 it says, those who sow in tears are going to reap in joy. You might be planting the seeds while you're crying, but when you reap, you're going to be joyous and rejoicing in the Lord because you're recognizing him. It's the same thing. When the Lord brought us out of captivity, we were like those who dream. Our mouth was filled with laughter, and we began to sing. The Lord has done great things for me. I want to sing it right now. And then, this is great, in verse 6. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing. That's us. We shall doubt, doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing our harvest bringing our sheaves with us. We sowed in tears, but we're reaping. We're bringing the harvest, the sheaves, in joy. 